Hey. Should we do part three? Huh? Oh, I don't want to edit this nightmare. I haven't even started yet. Oh boy. And transition time. That'll work nicely. Okay, get it out of here. I will <laughs>
Is someone here? Okay, it's Sam. What did you call me for? Uh, let's do part three of the airplane thing. Uh, people are waiting for that one. Yeah, they really want to see part three, but, um, okay. Here, you take this camera. Okay, so, we did get a lot further, or, well, I guess, um, my hinges are in. These are aluminum hinges. I got them from aircraft spruce, something like that. There's a bunch of A&R where I check this out. Look how much A&R where I had to buy. And half the stuff isn't even right for what I need. This is like almost $200 like and junk, but mainly because of these turnbuckles and junk. Actually, that's over if you count the turnbuckles, which are these things. Each one of these things is like 30 bucks. It's ridiculous. So it's kind of heavy. Yeah. But hey, it's a airplane grade or Army Navy bolts, so there you go. So we have um, the hinges here. This is, I actually copied these from an, an ultralight. There's actually a guy I know. His name is Dewey Davenport. He actually does biplane rides. Cool, Dewey. What's this? What do you got for me? Here you go, Peter. Take this. This Wait. is a an altimeter for you. Did you just pull this out of that airplane? Oh yeah, this worked perfect. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I went to actually his airstrip, and he, he actually had an ultralight in his hangar, and I looked at it and copied most of the parts, as far as like thicknesses and sizes of cables and all that. So, what works for a really heavy airplane should work for this lighter ultralight airplane. I'm still projecting a weight of about 180 pounds or so. All finished. Um. Oh yeah, this is pretty stuff. Check this out. Look, this is definitely not going. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. You know the windscreen, right? Oh no, Toby, what are you doing? But uh, yeah, there's gonna be some vertical members that run from here to there to tie this all together. Even though this right now is just held by this single bracket and this little L piece made here with some aluminum. But that's really stuck. So I don't really anticipate that go that thing going anywhere at all. But hey, come check out this too. I also worked on the cockpit as well. <laughs> it's made out of plywood and foam. But uh, we have in here, I have the uh, the uh, control stick setup thing. Basically, I have this aluminum bar here. I'm going to drill a hole here and run the uh, cable through these uh, far, uh, the fair leads or far leads. I'm not sure how these are pronounced, but these come out through the back, and that gives my aileron, so that uncouples the uh, pitch control from the uh, roll control. And pitch is simply out here, which is really easy to look at. It's The nice thing about that is I can clearly inspect it before every flight. Because I have horrible nightmares about the elevator failing. Because uh, that's pretty much like the level class one failure, in my opinion, if, as far as critical things go. Because if you do lose the elevator, you're pretty much screwed. Like, you're going to... Well, if it falls off too, that's even worse. But losing control of this axis is almost fatal. The plane's not tripped in. Uh, oh, you check out these rudder pedals. Look at these. I have rudder pedals in. This is this is I think this is one sixteenth cable. It's really not as necessary. I mean, I think it takes like four hundred pounds of pressure to break the break the lines. And yeah, maybe I can muster out with my feet if I'm really trying on a good day. But something is gonna break somewhere else before I can do that. What are the door hinges rated for? Uh, they're they're rated for industrial doors. I picked them up in the commercial section at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's fine. I mean, it's not airplane grade but i could use some nose weight and the hinges seem like overkill enough so also check out the seat too look i installed this i didn't really video this part but uh i think i forgot something on my camera wasn't working or the battery's dead so i was being lazy but i pretty much attached the seat belt and so i can take this oh the nut fell off oh well okay so i think that almost wraps up about this one i didn't really get anything super crazy done Oh, we should look at these motors too before we go. But I have two of these Rotomax 150cc electric motors, so ooh, this should be really good. I've seen uh, other aircraft fly on similar motors with about the same size, so I know this is definitely possible, especially if I keep this thing under about 180 pounds or so. It should take off with with some marge, some some room for performance issues, I guess. I don't know, but uh, that's cool. Look at big that. brushless motors. Big old brushless motors. Okay, back to the airplane. Oh, look at this. Uh, this part was 3D printed, these pillow blocks. I still have to put aluminum strap over top just for um, even more insurance purposes, but still, I was actually hanging these blocks and hanging off the ends of them while I was just bent over the ceiling, and they won't break or n not even any indication at all of stress, so that's pretty good. I mean, that's a great use for a 3D printer. Uh, there's actually going to be a real in-depth video involving that. Uh, Lulzba also sent me a printer too, which is pretty sweet. So now I have two Tazes so I can make things a lot faster because there's going to be a lot more 3D printer projects coming out really soon. So this is also going to be more shooter too so I can print a lot faster because those prints only took, uh, they took about uh, three hours versus 10 hours with the um, standard 
extruder size, which is really, really awesome. Oh, also, I'm probably actually going to 3D print these wheels. So I don't know if anyone's actually used a more extruder with any of the TPU, but let me know if anyone's done that. I might have to ask a little spot about that too, because uh, I'm actually going to 3D print the wheels and tires for this. So that's going to be probably in the next video. And the flex extruder would take forever. Flex extruder would probably take forever, but I know at least it would print TPU just fine. Okay, question time. Uh, let's go through these. I noticed twisting on the empennage around 1143 when it bumps to the ground. Uh, make sure it's reinforced enough. Turbulent error could cause some serious twisting. Um, in the other video, it was obviously kind of taped on. I'm kind of impressed that most people didn't pick up on that. But I was really just laying there just for um, uh, me to get some weight checks and all that. So, yeah, it's definitely bolted on now. It's definitely not going anywhere. I'm making sure of that because the stabilizer falling off is one of my biggest nightmares. I'd rather have the wings fall off than this. Actually, would I have the wings fall off the stabilizer? Either way, it'd be pretty fatal almost. Almost 100% fatality rate. On to the next question. All right, I think this windscreen's kind of getting in the way. So. Hey, Peter Schrieber, I am a senior in, <laughs> in undergrad engineering school, and my school's aerospace club wants to do the calculations for your plan for the physics and torsion on the body itself, and the electrical engineering professor that is a part of the club wants you to help you with a generator for the plane. If you're interested, shoot me a message and let us help your project be successful and safe. I actually didn't mean to get back to you, uh, Scott, but unfortunately, uh, I've kind of forgot about this question. I really wanted to answer this one, but... Um, I probably would send you some drawings as far as because uh, I'm really critical about the fuselage and all that, but I simply just don't have any CAD files of it. All I have is, is a crude CAD drawing of the actual side of the fuselage and all that. I just made everything up as I went, just based off of other plans I saw. So that's probably another thing I would need to answer to as far as plans goes. There are really not going to be any plans for this. I'll probably throw up a crude three view um, and all the CAD stuff I have, but uh, almost everything else I'm just making up on the fly as I go. So not much planning going on there. Uh, my eyes are watery waiting for this video. Heart comment. Uh, RC Bip says, Peter, I uh, can't see where you're sitting on, but you should design your seat to progressively crush to help save your spine in a hard landing. Definitely check. It is made out of foam, so if I hit my body on the ground in a horrible flailing motion, it'll just break the seat and I won't totally be uh, hosed, I guess. It might save my spine to some degree. Even though probably a nose in would be pretty fatal, too, so I wouldn't really plan for that. Extroderin says, remember center of gravity and center of lift need to be perfect. I want you to survive this, Peter. You are one of the best YouTubers. Thank you, guy. Uh, yes, and I'm very, very wary of the CG issues that I'm facing with this, but I think I actually came to the compromise that I'm gonna put the batteries in the nose. I'll just put the ECs up next to them too so I actually can monitor all these things. And that's probably a benefit too, because if it does crash, the batteries weigh about 30 to 40 pounds. So I'd rather have them in front of me rather than adding to the mass behind me because all that mass would be transferred forward as it impacts the ground. The energy has to be go has to go somewhere, and I'm sitting in a really really bad area for that. So them in the front, I can easily monitor them. I can get the balance point right. It removes the weight from back here because I've installed the BRS system, which I'll also huge thank you to the people on <laughs> on Patreon and uh, GoFundMe. You guys are amazing. <laughs> you helped me so much as far as getting uh, funding for this, but uh. I still have a little ways to go, but I think I probably can actually pay for it myself, considering that you were talking about, like, um, we're probably going to go down to Florida or something the next day or, or so. Yeah, we might go to mm. Florida, Georgia, and do some hurricane stuff. Yeah, we're probably going to do some damage assessment by the power company, so they're probably paying us to do some of that. And we'll probably also do some volunteers for some search and rescue stuff with drones. So if you guys don't hear anything from me for a week, I'm probably down in Florida. Peter, where did you get that shirt with the cat bread with his face in, face in bread, Drew Tube says. Uh, that yeah. is William Osmond. The inbred cat shirt. Yeah, the inbred cat shirt. I need to get an inbred puppy shirt. I'll probably do one with this guy soon. Uh, Romke DeBoer says, If you survive this, you should build a rocket-powered RC car. Uh, that is on the list of things to do, so we will probably do that at one point. We'll probably go to Walmart to go find one. Can you donate your puppy, Tony Stark says. Which one? What do you think? No? You're mine? I'll come back from the grave to get you. This one's bored. Yeah, probably like the rest of people in this video. Of stuff. Hey Peter, if you die, will we at least get to see the plane fly? JK, please don't die. Alec McNod says. Uh, Sam, you're in charge of that. I will give you my my Google password and all that stuff. So either post it to Live Leak or post it on YouTube. The whole world's watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last question. This is from FAV Reviews. He's actually a really smart guy, so I like his questions and comments. Uh, looking good, Peter and friends. The tail is shaping up nicely and should be plenty strong with the addition of some simple wire bracing. Definitely check. I have to add that, so that's on the shopping list next. A few suggestions and comments in general. The ballistic chute is definitely the way to go. Definitely think about doing that too. I've uh, come to my senses and we'll get a ballistic chute. 
Uh, do not borrow with a hybrid system of any kind. Oh, is he's referring to the engine. Yep. Yep. Check. Check. I'm not doing hybrids because that's noisy and I don't know enough about that. Uh, so he's mentioning I should probably use lithium ion cells. We have plenty of those at work. You build batteries like that all the time, don't you? Yeah, I've the, made yeah. packs. This giant 18650 cells. So maybe an 18650 power plant with like a thousand of the cells in the nose may be something to look at in the future, but I'll probably stick for lipos for the first couple of flights just because I know they work and they're easy to get. Um, can you hand me that paper back there? I think there's a checklist of things I need to cover. Yep, yep, yep. I hit everything. Yay, goodbye. Later, people. Say bye, Toby. Bye. Get off of my face.